friends, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, and today I have a fun project, and I've been dying to do this for a long time. I saw a really cute pendant in um, my favorite beading magazine, Beads and Beyond. It's a UK magazine that I don't find very often, so I got the app on my Kindle so I can uh, peek at it every once in a while. But anyway, they had a lady in there who made cute um, quilled jewelry, and she used kind of an expensive pendant for it, but I thought, hey, why don't I try that? but use a bottle cap and then I can put a pin on the back or a cord or a regular bale, but it's just such an inexpensive way to make some really cute jewelry. And um, so I quilled some flowers, Mod Podged it, and um, well, there you, there you see. Uh, I have some other examples here and I'm gonna, this is really, I'm actually gonna show you how to make this, but I'm also gonna show you what not to do because I, um, I actually thought I would fill this in with some uh, glossy accents because I didn't want to get the resin out. It's kind of chilly and I didn't want to do it inside and it wasn't warm enough outside. And um, mixed results. First of all, I did this 24 hours ago. It's not completely dry. And every 20 minutes I had to go and pop bubbles as they rose. It was so irritating. <laughs> um, so, uh, so I wouldn't do that that I would um, brush on a thin coat of, or a, you know, a moderate coat of Mod Podge, and then if you want to resin it later, go right ahead. It worked really well on this one because this was a really tight coil, so it just kind of made a nice, um, shiny gloss over the whole thing. And it did, I did get a few bubbles where the, the hole in the um, middle of the quilling part was. And then I kind of made these little cute, I thought these would be so cute to make with your kid's classroom or send in for a little treat or something. Maybe use soda bottle. Although all these micro brews have some really cool bottle caps. So I'm just, I'm scattered today. I've been uh, cleaning the cleaning the basement and part of the basement is the kid's craft area, which is kind of um, spun violently out of control. It's worse than my area, if that gives you any, uh, any indication. So I've just spent, you know, the last hour culling the Play-Doh collection and like 12 years of Play-Doh accessories to go through. I did it though. It's time. I said, time for a beating break, Lindsay. You gotta uh, turn on the camera and make something. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make something. I think we're gonna do these flowers because they're, they're pretty easy. And you'll need a quilling tool. And I love this one. This is from the Dollar Tree in a little quilling kit. I don't know if they have them anymore. I got it a couple of years ago. But they have those little kits every once in a while in the toy section. So grab some if you have them because you can make paper beads with them too. And what I have here is a, how long is that? That's a 24 inch length of um, quilling paper. And I'd love to share some great techniques on storing quilling paper. However, I don't believe they exist. My, whenever I start a project, my, um, box of cooling. Nothing goes back the way it came out. I can never fit it all back in. It's such a mess. I'm telling you, I'm a cooling on demand type person. I'll cut my strips when I need them with my paper cutter or a paper shredder because this is a madhouse. It's insanity. When I use up these darn quilling strips I have, I am never buying them again unless they come in a tube. That's one thing I did. I cut them short and stuck them in this uh, tube I had left over for some, from some glass rods that I brought. It's a madhouse. It's craziness. Crazy, I tell you. You know, I noticed that um, I am really way mellower when I do a painting video. I'm like just a little crazy when I do these uh, crafting ones. All right, so I put the end of the paper in my slotted cooling tool and I'm just uh, gonna twir uh, twirl it up. Uh, if you don't have this, you could do it just on a skewer. Um, it'll take you a little bit to get it started, but just like you're making a paper bead, basically. And I like to use my fingers to guide it so I keep the whole um, coil flush. And then I'm gonna let it kind of loosen out a little bit. That's up to your discretion. Um, we're not following a pattern here. It's not gonna be precise. And I'm just using my Mod Podge as glue. It doesn't matter what kind of um, water-based glue you use, but I would use a toothpick or a paper piercer or something like that to apply it because you don't want too much. So we're gonna make three of these and we'll just set them on our little board here, which is just, um, it's a piece of foam core wrapped in wax paper. You could take cardboard and, um, you know, tape some wax paper to it. And the reason you do that is because like here, whoops, like I, um, made that little pumpkin and I glued it together and I set it on there. So even if there was too much glue, it's not going to stick to my table or uh, paper surface. So that's why you want to do that. And another dab of glue. This is a really uh, fun project with kids. I would say probably recommend it for ages eight and up because most kids younger than that don't have the dexterity um, to do the quilling. Even though they might be able to do paper beads just fine, there's something about the, the skinnier papers or um, 
or just the coordination of using both hands, they seem to have a harder time. Once you hit age eight, they seem to be able to do it pretty well. Um, so you're probably wondering why I have all these bottle caps. <laughs> Maybe you're not wondering, but I'm going to clear it up anyway. So you might be wondering, and this is like half of my collection. Um, I asked my niece, who has a lot of, you know, friends in their 20s, um, if she would save me bottle caps. And they said that it was like an Easter egg hunt. They went through their garages after a party. They just like went to town and saved me all these bottle caps. It was so funny. She was telling me the other night that they, they were like, it's like an Easter egg hunt. Look, I found another one. I think that's awesome. And they're not going in the trash, so that's great. I'm going to glue these three together right here on my waxed paper surface. I can zoom in a little bit, I guess. There we go. We'll just glue those together. Um, and I like to kind of glue it where the ends of the paper are, if you can, because then it just kind of makes it look a little neater. Whoop. And um, if you find that your hands are too gummy, you can use a pair of tweezers. And um, another tip is to keep sewing pins around, and if you... Um, have a hard time if you need something to hold it because it keeps like coming unconnected while it's drying you can use sewing pins to um, to hold them just by you just stick them right in the center or on the edge and you can just hold them together like that there's enough glue on that I do like in this case where oh there we go it's gonna stay so now I want to make a couple leaves so I've got this um, another 24 inch piece of uh, quilling strip that I'm gonna tear in quarters and I tear instead of cut because I find that you get a more seamless, um, a more seamless look when you tear the paper. It's easier to glue down too. So what we're going to do is make a moderately loose coil. This, tell you what, I'll make one leaf, and then I'll pause the camera and make the other two so you don't have to listen to me gab. I haven't talked to anybody all day, so I'm just full of it. It's just talking to the dog and the chickens. Going out of my mind. Sorting Play-Doh. That's what it's like in my life, folks. <laughs> really can't complain. It's pretty, pretty fun. <laughs> and then uh, to make the leaf shape, I'm just going to pinch each end. And take a little glue. And glue it. I'm going to do a little glue on each side to make sure it's stuck really good. And... Glue it right in there. This dries really quick. All right, I'm going to do the other two leaves, and I'll be right back. All right, I got all my pieces glued together there, and now I'm just going to punch a circle from some cardstock. This is one of my jelly print papers that I made a while back. And just got a one-inch circle here. And I'm going to choose a bottle cap from my ample supply. Well, let's see. Maybe I'll do a white from Corona Extra. Let's try to find one that's, um, that's kind of flat across the bottom if you can. If not, it's not that big of a deal, really. Nobody's going to see that, the bent end. You could probably even uh, press it out a little bit with your thumb. And take a brush and some Mod Podge. And fill that in good. You have to make sure it's going to adhere. Just using Gloss Mod Podge. That's my favorite. I actually just ordered a gallon of the stuff because I go through it so much. And then I'm going to give another coat on that to seal it. This is a generous coat. I probably should have hot glued that bottom part in, but oh well. This will dry clear, so I'm not worried about it. My brush actually got a little uh, got a little stiff there because I was working on these, and I went on my organization project, and then just came back to it. Oh yay, it fits! All right, so there we've got that glued in there. We want one more coat, and I don't know how good this is going to do because my brush has gotten quite. Uh, hard with the Mod Budge, but just kind of want to brush it over there good. I gotta switch brushes. This is crazy. Stick that in the water till dry. Let's see. Let me grab a new brush. Hang on a second. All right, we got a new brush. I'll probably have enough Mod Podge in there already. So yeah, this is this is all there is to it. We're just sealing it in to protect it, and then if we wanted to resin over it later, we can. So with my um, ill-advised first attempt, when I filled it with the um, the glossy accents, any sort of paper glaze, um, there were so the the glossy accents was so thick and gelatinous that it kind of wanted to stay on top of everything, but then as it sunk in, it would trap all the air bubbles in the quilling. And so there were bubbles everywhere. It was maddening. It was crazy. And so like every 20 minutes over, I came with a pin, pop, 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 pop. And still, 
later that night I checked and I found more bubbles and I was doing it like for eight hours it was insane I kept checking up on it so um, but if you do find that and you've you found like a bubble in something after it's already started to dry poke it with a pin wet your finger with some water and you can actually smooth it down again so if you do find that uh, you have that problem anytime you're using the glossy accents or diamond glaze or paper glaze or whatever you have just uh, just try that trick so that's gonna dry like this as soon as it's dry it's gonna be nice and clear and um, I just glued a pin back there just these inexpensive pin backs you could also use a bale these are more expensive but they also give you a really um, a really sweet look you could even use both if you wanted to but I think that um, if you put the pin back it will hang pretty well for a necklace it might tip a little bit so you know it's whatever you want to do with it you could also glue it onto a ring finding if you prefer so there you have it uh, quick and easy bottle cap jewelry I want to thank you so much for watching until next time happy crafting